catching up about the demons she had to battle from her life in the spotlight. Thanks so much for talking to us about this, Rachel. It's interesting because oh, listening morning. back to those tracks, I remember being in clubs and dancing away to it and just thinking that you guys were so ultra cool. But behind oh, that, it was, um, it was quite difficult to deal with all of that fame, wasn't it? Um, I think it's difficult. I think in, in a band like S Club, we were very, we marketed at a very young audience and it was all very shiny and happy and everyone saw the sort of finished, polished product and we were very packaged and um, so, but underneath all of that, you know, I, I had a lot of uh, my sort of stuff going on and my emotions and my things that were going on and, and as soon as the camera's on, it's like, going on and singing reach um and putting a smile on and putting a show on um, but there's a lot obviously going on behind behind the scenes yeah and and in terms of the way that you dealt with that you you've been doing a lot of therapy but this is something that was unusual to you was it because your your family did family therapy back in the day well i actually was having a conversation with my mum about this because i remember having therapy um at a very young age but it was actually one time that we did that we had a family therapy session when my parents separated and it was just, yeah, all the family together. Um, but I have quite blurry memories of it. So I actually had to have a chat with her about it to kind of remind me, but I actually had personal therapy when I was um, 18, 19. That's when I first started having therapy and felt like I really needed to talk about all of my stuff that was going on that um, I really needed to just make sense of, you know, I, I spent a lot of years, um, pushing a lot of feelings and emotions away and not feeling them um which came from my childhood you know i i grew up i guess in a in, in a family that we didn't didn't really talk much about our feelings um and yes yeah, so i just got used to kind of internalizing a lot of stuff and um you know it's so important to talk <clears throat> what, you know it's so important to get those feelings out because i think the more they're inside, they manifest and you internalize them and they become much bigger. Do you, yeah. you feel like, oh, no, you go. No, 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 I was just gonna say, it's interesting because we've all got American friends and we all watch American movies all the time. And in America, it's always been considered okay to have a therapist. It's kind of like you're considered a bit mad if you don't have a therapist. And yet over here, there is still some kind of taboo about having therapy. And I think it's, really forward thinking of your family to realize that they were a family that didn't talk and, and about maybe suggesting family therapy which i think so many families would benefit from but is it something rachel that you continue to this day to to, to have a therapist i have therapy weekly yeah um i i need it as that kind of outlet to i think i'm someone who i've, I've always been someone who's been a warrior someone who thinks a lot, someone who internalizes things a lot and incredibly emotional and sensitive. So I think I just need that person who's not, you know, I speak to my closest friends, obviously, my husband, but other than that, um, having that person who's not so close just gives me that outlet to be able to be acknowledged and make sense of it all when it's yeah. not, when there's not that emotional connection, which I think is really important. Yeah. Rachel, you're married. Rachel, so you're watching all those. Oh. Um, it's alright. Go on, sorry. Frankie. Go on, oh. Frankie. <laughs> watching all those videos back, I remember um, watching those when I was younger and just thinking how amazing you looked and and really looking up to you and thinking I want to be like her. And obviously, we spent a lot of time around you guys. Um, yeah. You were on the front of a lot of magazines, looking insanely hot. But how did that make you feel? Oh. Did, did you feel pressure? Did you feel comfortable like that? Um, it's a conflicted one, really, because I think you'll know, won't you? Because it's such a weird thing yeah. growing up in an industry where you see pictures of yourself all the time. You know, one image you'll see of yourself on a glossy magazine, which you know you've had hair and makeup and lighting and photoshopping and all of that stuff that happened and then a paparazzi picture of someone hiding in a bush who's caught you on the beach and you don't know about it and you know so you're constantly seeing images yeah. of yourself which i think is really unhealthy um especially when you're you know i was i went into s club feeling quite insecure quite not really knowing who i was um and growing up publicly and i think all of that stuff plays into plays into everything really 
uh, one thing I must ask you is about the Britney Spears documentary. I mean, uh, obviously, loads of uh, women and, and people have come out in support of Britney, but the uh, documentary in America shines a light on how someone is, you know, suddenly pushed into the spotlight and every aspect of their life is really examined. I mean, looking back yeah. on what happened to you being in S Club 7 at 19 years old, were you ready for that exposure? Um, I don't know. It's a tricky one. I mean, part, you know, I, I got into S Club at a time when I was going through a lot of emotional turmoil, really. My whole, my my family had kind of all broken apart. We'd lost our home. Um, and I was kind of just on my own quite a lot and just with my friends and sort of um, working and, and kind of um, internalised all of those things. So I went into the bands and it was so exciting and a total escape from all of that stuff but at the same time it allowed me to push down all of the stuff even more um and then everything was in the spotlight so i kind of just got so used to doing what i'd always done really as a child um but doing it publicly and just pushing everything away yeah. um not acknowledging all the, these feelings and everything i brought into the band with me um and but doing it in the spotlight and I just became I, I, used, I would censor myself a lot and I even now talking about this stuff because I'm not I'm not used to talking about this publicly so but I think it's so important to get that message out there that you know even I do it I look at Instagram and I look at all of these women who I you think look amazing and but actually behind the camera we're all real people yeah. with all the same struggles all the same feelings and all trying to make sense of our own stuff mm -hmm. and it takes daily work i think to to become the best person you can be and that's what i'm trying to do every day yeah. and you're and you're trying to do that with your your childhood sweetheart and uh and yeah. your two your two young kids life has uh, has really changed hasn't it what, what was it like reconnecting oh, with that uh, with the gentleman that then became your husband look at you two oh god um yeah no we were boyfriend and girlfriend when we were, when we were 12 um and we um boyfriend and girlfriend on and off throughout our sort of teens until i got into the band and he went off and did his stuff and then we bumped into each other randomly in our late 20s um and at that point i'd sworn off men and i was like oh it was lovely to see him but i was like no i'm going i was going off to la at the time and i was like um but we reconnected yeah. and we um we had obviously all of that history and um Aww. The rest is history. The rest is history. <laughs> the rest is history. Well, Rachel, yeah. thanks so much for talking with us this afternoon and for your for your honesty. Oh, I thank think you that so much. a lot of the viewers have taken a lot from that. So thank you. Oh, I hope so. Thank and you so much. And enjoy, and enjoy the rest of your kid-free home for a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> right. <Love you. laughs> Still Please, to come.